Hello everyone and welcome to a new video in our series about construction grammar. My name is Remy and I'm heading the language research unit at the Sony Computer Science Laboratories Paris. Today's video is called Innovating One's Way Out of Lexicalism. If you start learning about construction grammar at this time, there is one name that you will see pop up everywhere, Adele Goldberg, who is currently professor at Princeton University. When I was recording this video, her 1995 book Constructions, a construction grammar approach to argument structure, already gathered a whopping number of 10,915 citations and still counting. Now with this book, Goldberg threw some large pebbles in the pond of linguistics whose ripple effect we can still feel today. The reason for this ripple effect is that she took an innovative approach to a problem that is considered to be the bread and butter of linguistics, argument realization. Argument realization concerns the way in which a verb combines with its arguments to form sentences. For example, the verb enjoy can be combined with the arguments we and each other's company to form sentences such as we really enjoy each other's company. Before Goldberg's book, most linguists had settled on an approach that we call lexicalism. Lexicalism is probably the best way to address the problem of argument realization if you believe in the distinction between the lexicon on the one hand and the rules to combine lexical items on the other. You can think of this approach as involving a specialized dictionary for every possible pattern in which a verb may occur. For example, a lexicalist will say that each verb comes with a list of things that it needs to combine with to make a complete sentence. This list is called the valency of the verb or its subcategorization frame. A verb such as to laugh only has one element in its valency list, so it can combine with she to form sentences such as she laughed. English speakers would find it weird, however, if you would add another object to say things such as she laughed a smile. Verbs such as to enjoy need to combine with two arguments to form sentences such as we really enjoyed each other's company. And so if you take away the second object and you would say we really enjoyed, English speakers will find that something is missing. Verbs such as to offer can take three arguments, such as she offered me a yellow flower. Now words behave in ways that are too complex to simply list in a dictionary. Typically, a word can occur in different patterns of argument realization, and language users are often very creative so they can coin new uses of for a verb that no one has done before. The verb to offer, for instance, is just as happy to occur with only two arguments instead of three. So you can simply say, she offered a yellow flower especially in context where the recipient is sufficiently clear. You can also say, she offered a yellow flower to me, or you can promote the object to the subject of the sentence, as the British poet William Blake wrote, a flower was offered to me. The fact that words can, um, can end up in many different kinds of sentences is called multiple argument realization, and lexicalist theories have never been able to explain why and how this happens in a satisfactory way. In construction grammar, as we've seen in previous lectures, we do not make a sharp distinction between a dictionary on the one hand and rules for combining words on the other. So Goldberg argued that instead of having an abstract set of rules, there are grammatical constructions that are very similar to lexical items in the sense that they are also conventional mappings between meaning and form. She called these constructions argument structure constructions. The most famous of them is the ditransitive construction, sometimes also called the double object construction, as in the sentence, she gave me a yellow flower. The underlying semantics of this sentence is something like X causes Y to receive Z. To replace X, Y and Z with labels that we can understand better, an agent causes some recipient to receive a patient. These are called the argument roles of the construction. Now the syntactic pattern that is conventionally associated with these argument roles is subject, verb, indirect object and direct object. The lexicalist will object to this analysis. They will say that the valency of a verb give already specifies that you need three arguments, so the grammatical construction is redundant, you don't need it. You just need the abstract rule that combines the verb with the argument specified in its valency list. And true enough, the word give typically involves three participants, a giver, a gift, and the recipient of that gift. In construction grammar, we do not deny that uh, lexical items already contain a lot of information. And in this case, the valency of the verb give offers a perfect match with the valency of the construction. Each of the verb's participants can be construed as an instantiation of the more abstract argument roles of the ditransitive construction. The giver is the agent of the event, the gift is the undergoer or the patient, and the one who receives the gift is the recipient. 
But let's take a different verb, to bake. This word is typically used in utterances such as I baked a cake, where you have two participants. However, you can also use it in a ditransitive construction, as in I baked her a cake. In a lexicalist approach, where the behavior of words is exclusively specified in the lexicon, you need to consider the two occurrences of bake as involving two different lexical items. One item that takes two arguments, and one lexical item that can take three arguments. The thing is, why do you need different lexical items for talking about what is essentially the same baking event? Many linguists now reject the idea that you can simply list what the meaning of a word is. A better way to think of words and their meanings is that they interface to all of the knowledge and past experiences that you have about certain concepts. So a word like bake is an access point to everything you know about baking. That someone does the baking, that something is being baked, that you typically use instruments such as a pan or a pot to perform the baking, that you typically do the baking in the kitchen, and so on. The meaning of the word bake is therefore not simply a list, but an entire frame in which all of these frame elements, or participants as we often call them, play some role. And this approach to meaning of words is called frame semantics. And this is yet another extraordinary idea that was invented by Charles Fillmore, the father of construction grammar. So argument realization in Goldberg's approach starts with categorizing an event in the world as a particular semantic frame and then profiling which parts of the frame that we find relevant for communication. If I write in a recipe, bake the bread for about three hours, I profile the event as an instruction, I only need to highlight a thing that you need to bake and for which duration. If on the other hand I say the man baked a pancake, I profile both the baker and the food. In construction grammar, none of these different profiles requires you to have a different lexical item in your dictionary. You only need to combine them with different grammatical constructions. These constructions, which Goldberg calls argument structure constructions, as I've said before, express abstract semantic frames. Let's make all that more concrete before we get too hungry from talking about all that baking. We know that the meaning of the verb give always implies a recipient, because it's a contradiction to say I gave her a present, but she never received it. The word to bake, however, does not imply a recipient, because you can perfectly say, without contradicting yourself, I baked her a cake, but I forgot to give it to her. You may have intended her to be the recipient, but something may have come in between. So Goldberg argues that instead of having a lexical item for the verb bake that includes a third participant in its valency list, for which we have evidence that this is not true, it is more sensible to say that some parts of the meaning are contributed by the verb and other parts are contributed by grammatical constructions. As we have seen, the ditransitive construction expresses the abstract relation between an agent, a patient and a recipient. If we now combine the verb to bake with this construction, the verb may already contribute two typical participants, a baker and the food that we baked, which we can construe as instantiations of the agent and the patient of the action. What is unique about construction grammar is that the grammatical construction can now contribute additional meaning, the intended recipients. In other words, the verb's lexical semantics does not have to be an exact match with the semantics of the grammatical construction. They only need to be compatible. The combination of the lexical semantics of the verb and the abstract semantic frame of an argument structure construction gives rise to different related senses of the ditransitive construction that are connected to each other in what Goldberg calls a polysemy network. Verbs of creation, such as bake, combine with the ditransitive construction in the sense X intends Y to receive Z, such as I baked her a cake or I made you a soup. When Justin Timberlake sings Cry me a river, the verb cry is metaphorically speaking a verb of creation, so it fits the ditransitive construction as well. Another related sense is X prevents Y from receiving Z, such as the owner refused us access to his property. All of these related uses of the ditransitive construction are centered around a cause transfer frame. If the bake example hasn't convinced you yet of the constructional approach, let us take the verb sneeze. Sneeze is the prototypical example of what linguists call an intransitive verb, which means it can only take one argument. You can say, Pat sneezed, but you don't say, Pat sneezed the napkin, because the latter sentence does not make sense. However, Goldberg shows that it's acceptable to say things like, Pat sneezed the napkin off the table, or she sneezed the foam of the cappuccino. Goldberg's analysis is that the verb sneeze combines with the cost motion construction. 
which typically occurs with cross motion verbs, such as to put, as in I put all of my eggs in one basket. This construction expresses the abstract meaning X causes Y to move Z, where Z is a locative expression for the source or the target location or the direction of the movement. No linguist in history has claimed that cost motion should be part of the lexical semantics of the verb sneeze. Yet, in Pat sneeze the napkin off the table, it is construed as the cause that moves the napkin away from the table. Again, we can analyze this construct as the combination of the lexical semantics of a verb, which contributes the sneezer, or the causer of the motion, and the semantics of the cost motion construction, which contributes two additional participants to the scene a patient, and a source location. Not all argument structure constructions are quite as schematic and abstract as the cost motion construction or the ditransitive construction. Some of them are only partially schematic, such as the way construction. Examples of this construction in action are we laughed our way around town, in which we again see an intransitive verb used in an unusual pattern, or he smooth talked his way out of the conflict. Now this construction typically expresses two abstract meanings. The first one is to express the manner of movement, as we saw in the first example, where you can just picture people walking around town while they are laughing. The second meaning is the creation of a path out of something, as we can see in the second example. Here the subject finds himself in a difficult situation, but he uses his charm and smooth talking as a means to escape the situation. With the title of this video, Innovating Our Way Out of Lexicalism, I therefore use the way construction to imply that mainstream linguistics is finding itself to be stuck because of the limitations of lexicalist theories and that the innovations of construction grammar have created a means to get unstuck and move our field forward. This is a controversial stance to take because many linguists will still defend lexicalism with tooth and nail. So 25 years after her book, Goldberg's approach to argument structure is by no means accepted by everyone in the field, even in the construction grammar community. I will therefore dedicate the next video in this series to address some of the criticisms that you might find to argument structures constructions when you read about Goldberg's work, and I will explain why these criticisms are in fact misguided. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about argument structure constructions, I highly recommend that you read up on Adele Goldberg's latest thinking with her book Explain Me This, which is both very accessible for non-experts and interesting for language professionals. I also recommend you take a look at Martin Hilpert's video series on construction grammar, because he has a video dedicated to argument structure constructions as well. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time again.